Hello, today I'm sharing Sephora bestsellers that are truly worth your money and can work for pretty much anyone. Out of all the Sephora videos I do each time the Sephora savings event rolls around twice a year, this one is probably my favorite. I comb through the various categories on Sephora to find the current bestsellers at that time to share with you in these videos. And as of today, all Sephora Beauty Insider members can shop and save as many times as you want through November 6th when the Sephora savings event ends. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. The code for all tier levels is time to save. I'll have it here on the screen along with the percentage savings for each tier. Sephora collection products are 30% off for all tier levels. Plus Beauty Insider members receive free shipping on all orders. It's free to join to get access to the Sephora savings event and it's not too late. So if you're not a Beauty Insider member, I'll have a link where you can join or see more details and perks that you get with becoming a beauty insider. I'll also have the specific dates, codes, percentages, and other details down in my description box and in my top pinned comment along with all the products that I'm sharing with you today. I always have so many products I can recommend to you in these videos. They can get really hard to narrow down sometimes. I'm excited to partner yet again with Sephora for today's video. I had a lot of fun picking these products out. So let's get into these bestsellers I think are truly worth the money and that you'll love as much as I do. This first bestseller is a foundation that I absolutely adore. It's great across all skin types, especially for those of you like me with sensitive skin or maturing skin. There are some great ingredients in here. This is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This kind of acts like a primer and foundation in one as I blend it out. It starts to fuse with my skin and smooth my pores right away, but it still gives me time to blend it out to work with it before it sets down. It doesn't set down too quickly. I prefer to apply it with a damp sponge. I get medium to medium full coverage. I love going in with a thin layer first because that sometimes is enough to do the job. It evens out my skin tone beautifully and blurs imperfections. And then I can kind of assess and see where I need more coverage. Today I used less than a pump. The finish before setting is dewy, which some people really love. If you have dry skin, that's probably going to be great for you. I have combination skin. It's normal dry around the perimeter and I get some oil shine breakthrough in the center. So I do set my foundations and I do have a full review on this foundation if you want to check that out under my foundation roundups playlist. I set this today with the House Labs powder and after I set it with powder, whether it's this one or another one, this powder is really great too, by the way, it gives just a natural skin finish. It's not too dewy. It's not too matte. It probably looks rather radiant here in front of these lines lights, but in real life, non-camera lights. It's just a beautiful, natural, flattering finish. And it lasted really nicely throughout the day. This is such a beautiful, flattering foundation that has been worth every penny. Because I'm constantly testing complexion products, I usually start these videos there. So I'm gonna start with a concealer, a best-selling concealer that I've been loving. I'm just always on the hunt for good complexion products for those of us that are over 45 and over younger too. It's just more of a challenge the older you get. So this is Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. This is a very lightweight concealer that's buildable from medium to full coverage. And it gives a soft matte finish while it brightens and conceals seals. I appreciate that it does brighten and conceal. Sometimes it's hard to find a concealer that does both well. I don't know if you've run into that like I have. So it's got this curved kind of fat short doe foot, which is fine. I don't really love or hate that. Now I didn't like this at first though. I usually blend out my concealers with the warmth of my fingers to make them as skin-like as possible. And when I did that with this, I, I found it was a little bit cakey and that just didn't mesh well with my dry under eyes. I have fine lines and texture and it just wasn't working with this concealer. I decided to retry it at some point because so many people were raving about it and I tried it with a damp sponge. And that's when I fell in love with this concealer. When I apply this, when I blend it out with a damp sponge, it just 
suffuses with my skin in such a beautiful way. It's flattering, smoothing, and skin-like. Now I can place another dot over my darkest areas if I want to layer it. I have under eye hollow, so it's usually just at that darkest spot, maybe at the outer corner too. And I can blend that tiny dot out with my finger with no problem, just not the entire blending process. This is such a beautiful concealer that wears well throughout the day and looks natural while giving that versatile medium to full coverage, depending on how I build it and whether or not I'm wearing a corrector. Today, I do have a corrector underneath and I built it up to, I would say medium full. I didn't take it to full coverage and that was plenty for me today on just a regular day. I love this. It's great for every day or for dressy special occasions. My under eye area will always crease. If I don't set my concealer with something, it's just how my anatomy is. I always crease right under my lash line and in my crow's feet area. The most flattering under eye setting powder I've ever found and my holy grail is Pat McGrath's Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Setting Powder. There are four shades. I have the lightest shade, which looks white, but it is translucent when you blend it out. It's got this silky texture and a brightening soft focus finish. I saw the word radiant on Sephora's website and I feel like that might scare people because when you see the word radiant, you often think sparkle. There is no sparkle in this. It just has a soft focus blurring airbrush finish. I like to press this softly into my under eye area with a brush. And then to give my extra crease prone areas a little extra insurance, I like to just press a sponge, damp or dry, whatever I'm using that day into those areas right under my lash line and at my crow's feet, just to make sure the powder is evenly distributed in those areas. This is a product that I won't be without. You can see I've hit pan. I think this is my fourth one and I will be getting another one in my Sephora haul during this Sephora savings event. I will be sharing that haul in another video coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And you're probably hearing some overlap because I do several Sephora videos during the Sephora savings event. This is a holy grail product, but I don't overlap products video to video. So if you want to see all my recommendations, I'll have the playlist linked at the end of this video and stay tuned because I am doing a couple more videos before the end of this event. Speaking of Sephora hauls, about a month ago, I ran out of one of my favorite face setting powders, the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. Now I don't bake my face, this is just used by me as a setting powder. It's sheer, it's silky, it's got a soft matte finish. It controls shine and keeps my makeup in place really, really well. It's also got vitamin E and just never looks cakey. It's a really beautiful powder. So this will be in my Sephora haul also. I've been waiting for the Sephora savings event to come along so that I could repurchase it because this this is another product that I didn't realize I wanted in my life so badly until I was out of it. It's beloved for a reason and it is one that I think has been worth every penny clearly because I'm rebuying it. This bronzer kind of snuck up on me. I've had it for a while, but out of nowhere, I just found myself reaching for it more and more in lieu of other bronzers. And I do love that you can purchase refills instead of the entire compact once you run out. This is Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Matte Bronzer. Now, if you have dry skin, don't be scared of the word matte in there. It basically just means there's no shimmer. It just gives a natural finish. But more than just giving a natural finish, it almost seems to blur my skin as it it's giving warmth to my face. I love the large size. It makes it really easy to use. The tone medium is perfect. It's a great neutral for my light medium skin tone. It's got microfine perfecting powders, so it's really silky. It's also got hyaluronic acid that help your skin appear softer and smoother. I love that it's sheer yet buildable. You can't really mess it up. Uh, bronzers don't always swatch well, but I mean, you can see the neutral tone there. It is the bronzer I'm wearing lightly today. It's it's silky, it's smooth, it's buildable, and I do love the compact. It's just great, especially if you're traveling and you want a nice size mirror. I've used it here as I've been applying my makeup on camera plenty of times, and I've been asked what the product is that I'm using. It's this, big mirror, big bronzer for a big bronzer brush. This is a luxury product that I paid full price for, so I definitely think this is a bestseller that's worth picking up during the Sephora savings event.
I might be the only person to recommend these because they're not new shiny products. They're classics, but they're bestsellers for a reason. This is from Laura Mercier, the Blush Color Infusion. Now, it doesn't really matter what shade you get. I pulled two here because I think they're really nice neutral shades. This is the shade Chai, which I started applying today so you can get a good look there. And then I kind of topped it over a little bit with the shade Fresco. So you actually have one of each finish here. You have the slight radiance of Fresco and then the matte chai and I'll swatch them on the back of my hand so you can see them. So even though Fresco has glimmer particles here in the pan, they don't show up as glimmer when you actually swatch it, when you apply it to your face. It's just a radiance and then you can see matte chai there on the top. It's just a nice neutral pink without being too pink. Laura Mercier blushes are very silky. They're buildable. They're flattering even if you have some texture and they wear really well throughout the day. These are staples in my life. They have been for double digit years, actually not these specific blushes, but Laura Mercier blushes in general. And I think that's why they remain bestsellers. It doesn't matter what shade you get. These are really great and worth the money. If you're like me and extremely picky about your highlighters and you just don't like them to have any glitter or sparkle once you blend them out and you just want them to give you a little, you know, something, something, but not highlight anything bad, any texture, you know, just give you a little enhancement. That's what both of these do. Now, this first one is quite often out of stock and it was out of stock about a month ago, but as of today, it's in stock. I don't know about when this video goes live, if it's gonna be in stock. I'm crossing my fingers. This is the Dior Backstage Face Glow Palette in the shade Universal. And it's that shade specifically that is always going out of stock. There is another one called Glitz. If you have that one, let me know down below. Is it also ultra fine and smooth with no glitter? The name leads me to believe it has glitter. This is so beautiful. I've used this on my face, my collarbones, my eyes. I love using this deep shade and this gold shade as eyeshadows. I like using this white on my inner corners. I did it a little bit today. Today I mixed these two as my highlight over here. I'm hoping you can kind of see that in the light. Sometimes I use this pink as a blush topper. It's just so, so pretty. You get a lot for your money, actually, especially this being a Dior product. The quality is just stunning. Now my other silky soft super fine highlighter option is Benefit Cookie. This is a longtime favorite, another bestseller, and it's a little bit less than getting an entire palette. But keep in mind it is Sephora Savings event time, so you're gonna save a little no matter which one you get. This is a really pretty champagne shimmer, so just to show you a comparison of the shades, I'll also show you some swatches. Now this is also available in a really great holiday palette with full sizes of Cookie, Hula Bronze, and Shelly Blush. Those two Benefit products are also favorites of mine, that specific shade of blush and Hula Bronzer. And that palette I think is like $4 less than this. So you have some options here, whether you're wanting a palette with different types of products, a palette with various highlighters you can use for various things, or a single highlighter, whatever you want, but they're all bestsellers. I don't think you could go wrong with any, no matter what you choose. I was late to the game getting this bestseller. This is Makeup by Mario Master Matte's eyeshadow palette. Now at the time, I wasn't wearing a lot of just mattes, so I didn't think I was really gonna use it that much. And even when I first got it, I wasn't doing a lot of matte looks, but I found myself dipping into this for a matte here and there. Sometimes it was this light shade for my brow bone or my inner corner, or it was this kind of nude shade for my lid, or it was one of these shades to line, or one of these for my crease. It was just a shadow here or there. This is what I have on my eyes today for an all matte look. But since getting this, I have been wearing a lot of all matte looks on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes I'll just line my eyes, kind of smudge it out and put something in my crease. And this is just an easy palette to reach for because the shadows blend out so easily and they wear well all day. I know Patrick Ta has his new matte palette out. I haven't felt the need to get that because I've been happy with this one and the shades are so similar. Whether it's getting an entire eye look or just dipping into this here and there, this 
lives in my vanity. I reach for it constantly. I know there's been a lot of buzz about his newly re-released Ethereal Eyes palette, and I do have the original version of that, and I like it too, but I have not reached for that nearly as much as this on a day-to-day -day basis. I love this. I think it's a bestseller for a reason because it's truly useful and it applies and wears so beautifully. I know we all do different things with the Sephora savings event. Some of us grab gifts for others or for ourselves. Some of us try new things or buy pricier items while you can get them at a discount. I grab things I've run out of and backups of things I know I'm gonna need within the next few months, like mascara. We all need to buy new mascara every so often. And one of my favorites is a classic. It's been around a long time. It's also been a bestseller for a long time and deservedly so. This is Urban Decay Perversion. It's a really black formula that gives really great volume and length. It's also got some nice ingredients that help nurture and protect your lashes, which is an added bonus. It's kind of a wet formula, so I do like to scrape off the bristles before I apply it. That's just a little side note. Now, if you prefer a waterproof formula, there is a waterproof version of this that I also love for holding my curl and giving me that black volume and length all in one. So I'll have that listed down below for you as well, but if you're looking for a really great mascara, this has been a favorite of mine for a long time. I do have quite a few favorites, but I feel like it's been a while since I've talked about this one and it's a good one. These Makeup by Mario Ultra Suede Sculpting Lip Pencils have been bestsellers since they launched, probably. I think it's a combination of the shades that he came out with along with the formula. These glide on so easily and they're really great if you like to overline your lips because they still look natural. They don't tug and they're not drying, yet they help your lip products to wear better throughout the day. So I have two shades. The shade on the bottom here, they actually look pretty close, is Hue and this is Smoky Pink. Smoky Pink is slightly deeper than Hue. I would say Hue has a little bit more peachy brown to it than Smoky Pink, but Smoky Pink isn't too pink that it doesn't look natural. There's just enough brown to it to where it can still look like my natural lip shade if I apply it lightly. They're both really great, my lips put better lip shades that help even out my lip line and look really natural. I just always like to have these on hand. Actually, Hue is a restock for me. This is the second time and seeing how short Smoky Pink is, I feel like I should probably restock it too. To give myself more of a defined line, for the red I was applying today. I actually lined my lips with Hue today because it had a little bit more of a brown undertone to it. I didn't want to go all in with a red lip liner. I just wanted a little bit more lip definition so I would have some guidance to place the red, which is from the Sephora collection. This is the Sephora Cream Lip Stain Liquid Lipstick in 01 Always Red. These are ultra pigmented and really lightweight. They're also infused with avocado oil to make them comfortable and not sticky. I don't like many liquid lipsticks, but I can actually tolerate these. I have had this on for several hours now since before I started filming, I've been talking and drinking water and it looks exactly the same. I always get asked about my red lipstick when I wear it in videos, so I wanted to let you know what this was. There are tons of shades, and there's also a set of six that includes a one always red. I'll list it and link it down below too, and Sephora collection products are 30% off through November 6th, so I just wanted to share what was on my lips in case you were wondering or if you wanted to pick one of these up. I don't know what it is with these YSL Shine lipstick balms, but I have several and I just pull them out frequently to wear them. They're so comfortable and give the right amount of buildable pigment and shine and they just feel so good and they smell good too. So my most worn is shade 123. I wanna say it's called Nude Transparent, but they all have numbers. So this is 123. It's just a really pretty nude. The other shade that I wanna swatch live is this really bright shade 163 because it looks scary neon in the tube, but when you swatch it, it's not. It's this really 
pretty kind of, I don't know, warm, bright pink, but it's not overwhelmingly bright. It's wearable. These give medium coverage with high shine and a balm-like texture, and they're just really nice to wear. I, I find myself throwing these in my purse all the time. These are also bestsellers for a reason, and I think now would be a great time to grab one of these to splurge on yourself or to gift to somebody. It's probably not something someone would think to buy for themselves that they would appreciate. Now this sat in a drawer for a while. I didn't think I was going to like it, so I just didn't try it. I avoided trying it, I guess. And it is a bestseller because it went viral, but I also think it's a bestseller for a reason. I ended up really, really loving the Drunk Elephant Bee Goldie Bright Illuminating Drops with Niacinamide way more than I thought I was going to. They don't make me look like C-3PO like I thought I was going to. They instead give this very, very subtle champagne radiance that evens your skin tone and it's really flattering and lightweight without any added serum-y texture or feel. I wasn't expecting that from a radiant type of product. They're designed for all skin types. There's no sparkle or glitter whatsoever. There are several really great ingredients in here that are supposed to help with dullness, dark spots, fine lines and wrinkles, pores, uneven texture, a lack of firmness and elasticity. They're also supposed to soothe skin. There's also antioxidant benefits. And like their other color serum products, like the D-Bronzy drops that I mentioned earlier in the video, they're designed to be mixed into other moisturizers or products for just the tiniest hint of finish of color. It's a really, really lovely product that I wasn't expecting to like and I do understand why it's a bestseller and why it so frequently goes out of stock. There are a lot of really great Drunk Elephant products that agree with my sensitive skin really well. So I won't mention them all, but I will mention the number one best-selling moisturizer at Sephora, the Drunk Elephant Protini Polypeptide Cream, which has been in my life as a staple for many, many years. This combines signal peptides, growth factors, pygmy water lily, and amino acids to improve your skin's texture, tone, and firmness. And it's just really nice and lightweight, yet still hydrating. And this is another product that is refillable. I actually have the refill for this right here. Now, if you're a drunk elephant lover, or if you have people in your life that are, I wanna mention really quickly, just as a quick side note, the Drunk Elephant Trunk 7 7.0. They do this every year where they partner up with some kind of a bag brand of some sort to bring you a, a big value with a bunch of full-size Drunk Elephant products. I know some people will go in together and split it. So this year they teamed up with Baboon to the Moon and the bag is the Go Bag Mini Duffel Backpack with $159 value. I have this. It's really cute, really functional. There are 10 full-size Drunk Elephant products in here plus seven samples. Everything together has a $639 value and you can grab it for $465. I did want to mention it because some people really love grabbing this every year and either splitting it up or just getting it for themselves because they know they're going to use those products all year and they can get a really cool bag or something in the process. Unless you just have a stockpile of facial sunscreen, this is a great time to stock up on one, to have on hand, or to try a new one to buy a new one. A bestseller that I really like, especially for under makeup, is Summer Friday's Shade Drops. It's a lightweight SPF 30 mineral sunscreen that sinks in like a lotion. So it works great for me with my combination skin. I use this as a combination moisturizer sunscreen product, and it also protects my skin from environmental aggressors too. I always recommend grabbing some kind of home scent to have on hand during the Sephora savings event, whether it's for yourself or to grab as a gift to have on hand. You never know when you're going to need to have something when you're walking out that door during the holiday season and why not grab it at a discount. I know so many people that love receiving Nest candles or reed diffusers on the regular because they just love that brand and they don't really want to buy it for themselves. So I always recommend their holiday scent. It's not like you're 
typical holiday scent, you will fall in love with it. I'll put the notes here. This is consistently burned by me during the holiday season. And they usually have a duo with their birchwood pine candle. That's a really nice gift set to pick up. And that birchwood pine is also the best pine candle. There's just something a little extra special about it versus other pine candles. Now, if you don't want a holiday scent, you can't go wrong with their Moroccan Amber. It smells a little strong in the jar, but once it's lit, it's heavenly. Or Voluspa Santal Vanille. This is a wonderful scent at a slightly lower price point in a beautiful jar. Giftable and great for your own home too. Let me know in the comments what you're getting from the Sephora Savings event. You never know, they may end up in my haul. Sometimes I get ideas from you that I end up loving. If you wanna see more recommendations or see some new Sephora products that I've been loving, products I use all the time, be sure and check these videos out and stay tuned for some more upcoming videos. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. I hope you enjoyed this and found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.